I'm going to give you the perfect settings for Modern Warfare 3. And this isn't just a clip and ship, you know, quickly run through it type of thing. I've been testing all day because there is a way where you could get onto the game early by using the New Zealand hack where you take your Xbox or PlayStation, change the geolocation to New Zealand and get access 20 hours early. But you could actually get involved with PC as well by simply just going to your friends list and joining one of your friends and then boom, you're in the game. Well, instead of grinding camos or streaming, I've been testing settings all day for both controller, keyboard and mouse, and most importantly, graphic settings. And I'm going to give you the perfect day one settings because so much has changed. And trust me, I'm getting over 200 FPS in 4K with aggressive settings and my game looks beautiful and runs like a dream. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And we're gonna cover the controller, okay? You guys see in my hands, I have the Scuff Envision. They are the sponsor of today's video. But there's a reason why I want to point it out, because controllers are severely limited in this game, okay? When we go over to controller settings, we're going to notice some things, and I'll kind of point out why I want to, you know, put some emphasis on this Envision. So for a lot of this, we're just going to go ahead and go through kind of some standard things here. I prefer just rocking the default layout, bumper ping, that's all up to you. Dead zones, make sure you change this, okay? My default minimum that I always put it to is about three. You can go lower if you want. Some people put their dead zones all the way to zero and they like stick drift because it basically forces rotational aim assist at all times. I'm not that type of guy, but there are a lot of high level players that love dead zone aim assist or they love dead zone at zero. So they get constant stick drift. If you want to try it out, honestly, you're aiming all the time with your thumbs anyway. If you're a really good player, you probably won't feel it, but just something to consider. Um, if you're new to COD or you're a baseline player, maybe you haven't touched a game in a while, baseline setting a lot of people love. 6, 6.8. Give that a try on controller. Aim response curve is going to be dynamic. The rest of this is all going to be set to default. Make sure you have your aim assist on because it's stronger than ever. And then aim assist type is default. No reason to go over to Black Ops anymore. Here's where things start to get really interesting, especially for my controller players. So we have automatic tactical sprint, okay? I prefer to have that on and move a lot fast, faster across the map. And especially with slide canceling and reduced delays, goodbye Infinity Ward, we can now actually move across the map without getting too hard punished. So we have auto attack sprint on. For tactical sprint behavior, we're gonna change that to single tap run. So that way, if you are running, if you tap it, it's not gonna take you to a sprint. It's gonna take you to a full tactical sprint, which is gonna get us across, across the map fastest. We want all of this off. Grounded mantle off, airborne mantle off, automatic ground mantle off. That's all the stuff that's gonna cause you to auto mantle. Now, granted, in this game, you mantle extremely fast, so it feels very different, um, but just keep that in mind. Okay, here's where the Envision really comes into play. And we we talked about this on the podcast. I've talked about this in, in some previous videos. The only way that you could slide in the MW3 beta wasn't tapping, it was tapping and releasing. Because in MW 2019, when we were slide canceling in the past, we were able to sprint and then the millisecond that we pressed b circle whatever it was it would start a slide but that's not the case anymore because we have the dive mechanic right so not only do we have to tap and release to slide we have to tap and hold to dive and it caused everything to feel really sluggish okay no matter if you have an envision or what or a basic controller set it to slide only sliding is infinitely more important than diving in multiplayer Set it to slide only. It's going to make your slides feel super crisp and super fast. Unfortunately, that means you aren't going to be able to dive anymore. Okay, and that's going to be a huge issue for Warzone in the future when you have to like dive off of buildings, pull your parachute, dive to make it like mantle. There are some places where you can't make crossings without diving. Well, fortunately, that's where the Envision controller comes in. And once again, you guys can check them out. They are the sponsor of today's video. Check out the link in the pinned comment and the description. What it allows us to do if we go over to the IQ software that it comes with is it allows us to bind keyboard keybinds. So you'll see here I have instant dive set. I have instant dive set to this paddle right here. This is just a standard jump paddle. This is a standard B prone paddle or slide paddle in this case. But since I don't have the ability to dive anymore, what I can do is I can actually remap the dive key to this little bracket. And then when I go in here into my settings, this will allow me to go into keyboard keybinds, go into movement keybinds, and then set a paddle to dive. And now I can both instant slide and instant dive because of the power of this controller. Now, the Pro is sold out. If you want to check it out, you can get signed up for an email. Or if you want to get the basic version, which is wired, I'm using the Pro version, but wired because I play on a PC, I always play wired. It's, it's a game changer. Not only that, I've got keys set up to auto run, keys set up to push to talk, keys set up to mute the mic. You can, have, if you're a streamer, you can set it up, change scenes on your, it's just, it's an incredible controller, 
very snappy, super low input de uh, delay. Like, it is by far my favorite controller. But if you want to check out, learn more, I have a full dedicated review on my channel. But it is a it is a game changer for this game. Okay, so moving back to where we were, we're going to set that to slide only, regardless of whether or not you have a custom controller or not. Plunging underwater, we're going to have that set to free. Parachute auto deploy is off. Sprinting door bash is on. Mantle only. Don't set this to movement. That's where you start doing the little pull up stuff. If I'm jumping, I want to mantle or I want to do nothing. Okay. Uh, slide cancel sprint. We want on. Uh, aim down side is hold. The rest of this stuff is going to be pretty much standard, um, except for this. Make sure we change this to instant. So the weapon mount exit delay. Basically, the moment that you start to move off of a mount, there's not a delay from when you get off. The very instant that you start moving, you get off of that weapon mount. Okay. Interact. I have prioritized reloads. That way, if I'm pressing square, it'll always instantly reload. But if I want to pick up a weapon off the ground, I can just hold to pick that up. When I'm playing Warzone, I have prioritized interact because I'm always tapping to loot and stuff like that. Multiplayer, prioritize reload. Warzone, prioritize interact apply all plates doesn't really apply here um and then the rest of this i have vehicle center centering turned off because i hate when the cameras move for me i'm a big boy i can move the camera on my own and then the ping wheel delay i have off okay we'll get into that later but i don't think it's important for you to have a ping wheel delay um that's when you like hold it and you could go around the wheel and it says like danger or help or moving here like, no one really uses that so i just have it off what that means is when i press the ping it will always instantly ping instead of waiting for a ping and release. Which is another reason why I like the Envision controller, because I have this side button here bound to ping in the IQ software. So every time that I reach up to press L2, I'm also pressing ping. So anytime I'm looking at someone, I'm also pinging them. Okay, so that covers basically the controller settings here. Make sure, follow those settings. Please trust me on them. Um, by all means, I'll have a uh, down in the pinned comment below the scuff link. I will always have any changes that I make to these settings after the fact. So I've been testing them all day, but if I made a mistake or someone points it out in the comments, I will amend it in the pinned comments. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get over to the keyboard and mouse section. So for keyboard and mouse, my general rule for keyboard and mouse is because everyone's monitor size is different. Everyone's resolution is different. DPI is different. For me, one swipe is a 360. I used to do a 180 but I kind of ran out of keyboard sp or mouse space sometimes. So for me, whatever's comfortable for you, whatever a comfortable flick feels like for you, that is a 360 for me. So that way I know when I jump and I swipe, it's a 360. I'm going to be aiming right back where I was. If I jump and I half swipe, it'll be a 180 directly behind me. Okay, so that's how I determine my mouse sensitivity. From there, we're going to have ADS sensitivity multiplier is just set to zero. The rest of this is all pretty much standard as well. Don't mess with any of the mouse acceleration, mouse wheel delay, any of, any of that stuff. Just leave that all to zero. Uh, from there, for the keybinds, once again, we kind of talked about how we changed some keybinds. These are my personal preferences. So I have G is set to auto move forward. So that allows me to run across the map without actually having to hold down W all day. Prone and dive is set to the back key of my, um, of my mouse, the back side mouse button. The front side mouse button is set to ping. So one of them is pinging while I'm aiming and the other one is proning so I can basically drop shot. Crouch, I have set to control. Interact, I have set to F. And then of course I do some movement changes in here as well. I cut my, my parachute with control. I dive um, still with that side mouse button. This dive is specifically for my controller. And the rest of that is all standard. Uh, fire weapon is all standard. Next weapon I have set to two. Weapon mount, I have set to Z. Weapon inspect, I have set to T. Melee is E. Lethal equipment, I have set to pressing my center mouse wheel. So that way when I press the center mouse wheel, I throw that grenade and it. I'm aiming while I'm pressing it and it feels really fluid for me. The rest of this is all going to be pretty standard. I have four set for armor plates and then previous weapon is set to one. So whether I press one or two, I'm always switching to that next weapon in my hands. There might be some amendments here as I go through and I get some kill streaks and stuff. I might need to change up one or two of these. But on the whole, this is generally what I'm going with. Ping, I have set to the forward. Um, danger ping, I actually don't even have that bound anymore. Uh, you do not need that. It's it, it only provides the diamond. It doesn't provide a live ping, so do not use danger ping. Push to talk, I have set to P, but I also have that set to a foot pedal underneath my desk. But I can just press that foot pedal and it'll do push to talk. Crouch behavior, I have set to toggle. Prone behavior, I have set to go to... So no matter what, when I press that prone button, boom, I slam to the floor and that's what I go to. We have the same thing as with the controller, auto attack sprint, single tap run. We close our backpack. All of that is set to off again, off, off, off. And then we're going to have slide dive activation independent. 
So that way we can have a manual keybind for slide and a manual keybind for dive, which is a luxury that regular controller players don't have unless you have this Envision controller, but we've already gone over that. Uh, for slide dive behavior, I have set to um, inverted, but actually that, that needs to be set to standard. I was kind of messing around some settings with the Envision um, set to standard. So that way, whenever you tap it, you start sliding because sliding is more important than diving. All this stuff, parachute auto deploy is all off. I hate whenever my weapon auto switches for me just because like I said, I'm a big boy because I'll know when that gun runs out of ammo. And then if I try to switch and then the game tries to switch for me, we'll just switch against each other. And then I'll just be still holding a gun with no ammo inside of it. Uh, everything else is going to be pretty much standard here. Make sure that you have apply all plates. That's more important for, for future games. Um, weapon mount exit delay. Make sure that's set to instant as well. And then sprint cancels reload is really important. So you can finesse. And I think the rest of this is, once again, vehicle recentering. Make sure we set that to off as well. And everything else should be good there. All right, let's get into the graphics settings. And like I said, guys, I'm on, I'm on 200, I'm getting over 200 FPS in native 4K. Now, granted, I got a beastly PC, but I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to tell you to set all your settings to low. Okay. There's plenty of people out there who are like best graphics settings. And it, it's just, everything is set to very low and their game looks like crap okay i'm not gonna do that to you i've gone through and i've tested what settings make the most difference for you and which ones will torture fps but not provide a meaningful difference in quality okay so let's go ahead and get into it um all of this is just going to be set to default make sure you are in full screen exclusive outside of that i just have my brightness set to 55 helps you see in a little bit of darker areas um nvidia Reflex low latency, I have set to on plus boost. Some people have better luck with on. I would encourage you to just jump into a game with on, jump into a game with on plus boost. For me, I get about 1% more performance with on plus boost. Uh, eco mode, leave that on custom. We don't want to be uh, saving the environment. We want to be saving lives in game and make sure we have those frames. Uh, none of this is really going to matter. I have HDR turned off. I would encourage you to do the same. It can um, affect issues with capture cards and stuff. So that's more of a streamer issue on my end uh render resolution keep that to 100 dynamic resolution keep that off fidelity fx cast not only gives you better sharpening for better outlines of character so your visibility is better but it also makes all your text and stuff look better as well so i have mine set pretty high because i like a sharp looking game it transfers better over to stream hopefully you guys like the new 4k quality of this video if you guys appreciate the fact that i'm putting in all this effort for you guys instead of grinding out camos like every other streamer do me a favor Drop a like on this video and subscribe because we got movement guides coming. We also have an advanced graphic settings video coming as well that goes way beyond what this video does. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Got a lot of cool stuff coming for MW3. Content focused first, YouTube focused first. Make sure you guys drop a like on this video and subscribe for even more. Okay, here's where we start getting into things a little bit more important, I would say. Okay, VRAM scale, it used to be important. Really, you can just set it to 90. You could set it all the way to, you know, 50. It, it doesn't really matter. I would encourage you to set it to 90. If you start having stuttering, maybe start to lower it, okay? Texture resolution. The game looks horrible at very low, especially your weapon camos, especially the textures around the map, but you're not getting a significant decrease in quality or in, in performance by going to normal, especially if you're GPU limited. Most people, especially if you're playing in 1440p or 4K, are GPU limited, right? Because... You know, we just we just can't keep up. The, the GPUs can't keep up right now with with uh, all that the game is demanding out of it. So, I would encourage you at the bare minimum, set it to low, okay? And I, I've actually put little stars on these, and I would encourage you to do the same. So that way, whenever you go to your quick settings, you can adjust these as needed. Okay, most of these settings are going to be set to low, but there are a few ones that really make a difference in quality. Okay, so set this to normal. Texture filter anisotropic helps with detail of the game when you see it at an angle, right? So as you're looking down a lane um, and you start to like see into the cracks, this is a really poor example on their end. You can see a lot more detail with texture filter anisotropic set to high. And more importantly, it hardly affects your, your CPU performance at all, like less than 1%. Okay, It runs really nice. I would encourage you to run it. Texture resolution, run it at at least low, give it normal as well and give it a try and then bump it down after that. Depth of field, turn it off, looks like crap. Detail quality level, you can kind of see the difference here. You have a beautiful flower over here. We can see each individual petal. And then over here, it's just a blocky triangle. If you want to go full FPS, go full FPS, throw everything on very low. But if you want your game to look good, but still operate well, this doesn't see a significant performance hit. Particle resolution, this one, 
it, okay, so you can kind of see it here, right? When you there's an actual explosion in game, there are these particles that come off. And when you throw it to normal or high, it looks really crisp. It looks good. But it's happening so fast that no one's going frame by frame to see it, and it torches your FPS. So I would encourage you to keep it on very low. Bullet impacts, I would encourage you to keep it on. It's good for recoil spray patterns as well. Persistent effects, I keep it off. It allows explosions to like kind of mark surfaces and, and cause some effects there. Shader quality, this is this is a big one for me. This is really going to affect not only like shadows, but also outlines. And for me, it makes the game look beautiful when I throw it on medium. When you throw it on low, it looks a little, eh. You're going you're gonna to see a little bit of performance hit with it, though. Not significant. We're talking maybe like 2%, but for me, it's worth it. My game looks stunning. And I'm a content creator. I want you guys to have the best experience watching it. I don't want you to feel like you're watching a 720p Twitch stream, so I throw it on medium. Once again, get in game, throw stars on all of these, and kind of pick and choose what you think looks best for you. On-demand texture streaming, no matter what, have it off. The rest of the stuff out outside of the stars, trust me, just turn it off. Not worth it. Shadow quality, same thing. You can kind of see it right here. Up here, this shadow is grainy, uh, hardly any clear lines. And then over here, nice, sharp lines, accurate. Okay. I would once again suggest you at least have it on low. I have mine on normal. I might even throw it up to high, but very low looks awful. Everything looks grainy, pixelated, uh, just not good. All this other stuff, off. Screen space, ambient, uh, reflections, reflection quality, all that off to its lowest settings as well. Tessellation, we're going to have that off as well. I don't notice a big difference in quality. Terrain minimum, uh, memory, we're going to have the minimum. Volumetric, that's all like ambient stuff. And it also affects your visibility as well with all that, you know, pushing into the scene. I don't like it. Uh, deferred physics quality off, weather off, and water quality is off. Okay, we're going to cover some things on view. But if you guys want advanced settings we're talking nvidia control panel settings we're talking windows settings we're talking ps4 and xbox settings as well to get you less input delay on your controller to get you more frames and especially over for my windows side there is so much performance to be had or lost with your windows and nvidia control panel settings make sure okay in the description you'll see my second channel i'll have it up up there at the top of the link okay that is typically where i do my coaching where i have you guys send in your footage and we'll be starting that up again when warzone three or whatever they're going to call it launches in Urzikstan. In the meantime, this is a bit more of a niche video for people who really want to get the most out of their game. On that second channel, I'm going to be launching an advanced graphic settings where we go into all the weeds there. So if you want that real quick, go to the description and subscribe to that second channel with notifications on because we'll be dropping that one as well. Okay, without further ado, here is the view tab. We're going to have it set to 117. I'm paranoid because at one point, like three years ago, when you set it to 120, it was causing people to lose aim assist. And ever since, I've set it to 117. Set it to whatever you want. Set it to 120. Now console has it, so set it wide. Okay. Make sure your ADS field of view is set affected as well, so that way you're not zooming in like insanely whenever you zoom in your gun. Weapon field of view, though, you want wide. It's going to bring that gun like smaller on your screen, so it's not covering up as much as your screen. Vehicle field of view wide for the exact same reason. Motion blur, we want it off. Blur off, blur off, grain off, and then the least camera movement possible. Least movement, least movement. Third person ADS, uh, leave that there. Spectator camera defaults to helmet. I don't know why. Set it to game perspective. Inverted flashbang is up to you. I don't like it because I have trauma from years of playing Warzone. So when my screen goes black, I think I dev errored. I don't think I got flashbang. So that's an option there. Uh, for audio, I would encourage you, unless you have some sort of audio tune, set something to PC speaker. Okay, That's going to bring the highest highs and bring them down, and it's going to bring the lowest lows and bring them up. So those little footsteps can help come through with that compressed. Now, I got a buddy. His name is Artis War. He, You guys have seen it. He's done some audio tunes in the past. I'm sure he's going to be coming out with an audio tune video specifically for MW3. It allows me to pull out some, some footsteps more than the default setting, so that's what I'm rocking there. Uh, all this stuff is totally up to you in terms of how you want to set it up. That's all personal preference, nothing really performance wise. I would suggest turning off reduced tinnitus sound because it takes away some of that like that kind of gets in your ear and just ugh, never, never fun to, to listen to. Uh, getting towards the end. Okay. Interface. For the interface, I have my subtitles all turned off. For color customization, we're going to throw on default HUD color, color palette or the interface. And then for the color filter settings, we're going to throw on filter two and set it to both. Okay. It's going to make the game feel brighter. It's going to make the, the 
textures, more more vibrant. I I just it's what I've been doing for the last few years, right? If you look at back here and you look how bold these colors are, I'll go ahead and move my camera out of the way. And you look at how bold these cameras are, eh, there are these colors, doesn't look very good, okay? We throw on filter two and you start to see those colors start to pop a little bit more, which just looks better when it's, you know, an enemy, a little red diamond, maybe laying down in a bush. Now you're able to spot that a little bit easier. The colors around the map all look a little bit brighter. I don't suggest changing any of this because then they start getting all sorts of funky colors and I don't think you guys would like that either. Uh, mini map, make sure we have that set to square. That's by default. Crosshairs, we want to set to static. By default in this game, and it was an old Infinity Ward thing that they kept in the game. As you're moving across the map, your crosshairs will float. And that is accurate for where your bullets are going in game. It looks horrible. It feels horrible. It makes everything feel like trash, especially for mouse and key players. I would much rather have my crosshairs be consistent so I can really focus on my good tracking as opposed to dealing with the default, which is on where those crosshairs kind of shake on you. I think they should have gotten rid of it in this game. Clearly they didn't, um, but I set it to static. It makes the game feel a lot better and it gets rid of some motion, literal motion sickness. If your default setting causes motion sickness. Don't get me started. Okay, over to telemetry. We'll go and throw in what's important. Uh, FPS cutter, server latency. Packet loss, GPU time, CPU time. Importance of this is you, if you're ever wondering like, God, why is my FPS so low? You can see which is taking longer to generate that frame, the GPU or the CPU. And it's not accurate for when you're in the pregame lobby. Pregame lobby is pretty CPU intensive. Uh, most of the time, my GPU is the one that's struggling to keep up. Um, and that's just a good little telltale to see whether or not your CPU or GPU bound. Uh, and then I also have network alert, alerts set up and hardware alerts set up as well and then i turn off tool tips i make sure to skip the introduction movie because i want to get straight to the game and i turn off gameplay tips as well nothing super important over here in account and network but what i do have set up here is in the quick settings i can just choose because i'm a hybrid player both could play uh, controller and keyboard and mouse you guys know i've got both set up ready to go um, I have set up for slide dive behavior. If you want to try that out, you can see which one feels better for you. I once again would highly encourage slide only. And then I have all these settings set up here. Kind of the kind of the key ones that are going to affect me, maybe 5%. But at the end of the day, it's going to make my game look stunning with all of these put together. So I would, I would encourage you to star all of these and give them a try in game and see which ones affect your performance the most and which ones make your game look the best. I would go with the settings that I suggested in today's video and then work it down from there if you're not getting the settings. More importantly, if you're not getting the settings, once again, check out the description for that second channel where I show you the best PS5 settings, the best Xbox settings, and most importantly, the best Windows settings and NVIDIA settings. We're not going to get into a whole BIOS tuning, timings, overclocking, but it's, it's the key things that you should know and should be doing to make the most out of your PC. Once again, biggest shout out goes to the guys over at Scuff. Okay, this controller is an absolute game changer. It feels incredible, and it, it, it literally just allows me to play a different game that my peers are not playing because now I can press one paddle, have an instant slide. I can press another paddle and have an instant dive. And it's just, it's a limitation of only having a limited access to a certain amount of buttons on either your PlayStation controller or your Xbox controller. It, um, it's awesome, man. I, I appreciate them sponsoring this video, and I appreciate you guys for making it all the way to the end. So much more coming. Movement guides, best guns, so much educational content, so much entertainment content to come. So make sure you are subscribed here. And I'm not streaming yet, but I will be streaming here pretty soon. If you want to check me out, I'll be live over on Twitch, grinding out MW3 as well. Hope you guys learned something new. Hope this helps you out in-game, and uh, good luck out there. Peace.